Okay, let us try to solve this problem using the uh, impulse momentum theorem. A 0.25 kilogram tennis ball, this is in kilograms, moves east at a speed of 50 meter per second and strikes a wall. The ball bounces back at the speed of 50 meter per second. The contact time between the wall and the ball was 0 0.015 seconds. What average force was exerted by the wall on the ball? I already pre-illustrated this problem to save some time because uh, we will be going very slow if we are going to draw this one by one. Okay, we have this wall and there is the tennis ball that is going to the east represented by the blue arrow with a speed of 15 meters per second. Take note that the uh, sign is positive because it's going to the right. As convention, going to the right or going eastward is positive. Then after it hits the wall, it bounces back. Of course, there will be a, an impulsive force that is exerted by this wall to this tennis ball. So it will bounce back as represented by the uh, red arrow. And take note, that uh, the final velocity is given to be 50 meter per second. But this time, we have to uh, take note of the negative sign because it is now going to the left or going to the west. So we have now the solution using the uh, impulse momentum theorem. We have J is equal to del delta P, which is the impulse is equal to the change in momentum. The impulse is having a formula that is equal to the force times delta T. And the change in momentum is equal to the mass multiplied by the change in velocity, which is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. Let us try to uh, look what are the given. So uh, I do not try to be given anymore uh, to save some time and space. So we have 0.25 kilogram. That will be the, uh, the mass of the tennis ball. And then we have 50 meter per second as the uh, initial velocity. And we have 50 meter per second as the final velocity. And the contact time is 0 0.015 seconds. Let us see if we uh, are now ready to uh, plug in the values. So we are given the mass. The mass is given. The uh, velocity initial is given. The final velocity is also given as well as the change in time. Therefore, the only thing unknown is the force which is uh, required to us by the uh, problem. So, uh, let us try to substitute values. We have here now as the force is equal to uh, the mass which is uh, 0.25 okay and that will be multiplied by the final velocity is negative 50 meter per second the initial velocity is 50 meter per second that is positive okay and that will be divided by what 0 0.015 seconds figure out what will be the unit of this one what will be the unit? The unit will be that is in kilogram. And this one inside the parenthesis is meter per second. And then down here at the denominator will have seconds. Therefore, kilogram meter per second squared, that will be in Newton. The, the answer will be in Newton. Okay, let us try to grab a calculator. and. Uh, Solve for this value that will be negative 100 times 0.25 that will be uh, negative 25 divided by 0 0.015 and we will be arriving at the value of negative 1666 .6 six six seven if we are adapting the uh, four decimal places take note 
that this one is negative and we are arriving at the correct answer because the force that was exerted by the wall is going to the, to the left. We go now to law of conservation of momentum. The objective is to learn the law of conservation of momentum. Momentum is defined as the motion of the mass of an object. The law of conservation of momentum states that the total momentum of two or more objects acting upon one another will not change provided that there are no external forces acting on them. Illustrate naman natin ngayon yung uh, law of uh, conservation of momentum. Uh, suppose, meron tayong dalawang bola. One is the blue ball that is uh, situated here. And uh, the other one is the uh, red ball, which is a smaller ball. Tawagin natin yung blue ball na ball 1 at yung... Uh, Red ball na ball 2. Okay. Initially, ang situate, situation ni uh, ball 2 is nandito sa extreme right. Just for example. Uh, si uh, ball 1 is going to the left with the velocity of uh, B1. Si ball 2, which is the red ball, is also going to the left with a velocity of uh, B2. Ngayon, dito sa illustration na to, mas ma taas yung velocity to or mas mabilis siya uh, ball 2 kaysa kay ball 1. Somewhere, somehow, mag-aabot sila as illustrated in this uh, picture sa gitna, aabutan ni red ball si blue ball somewhere, somehow. And eventually, magkakaroon sila ng tinatawag natin na collision. Ngayon, yung collision na yun, magkakaroon uh, tayo ng tinatawag na impulsive force na i-exert nitong si uh, ball 2 kay ball 1. The result, papasok ngayon dyan yung tinatawag natin na Newton's third law of motion na napag-aralan natin. Na for every action, there will be an equal and opposite reaction. Kapag ka binangga ni Red Ball, going to the left, si Blue Ball, which is also going to the left, ang magiging reaction ni Blue Ball is a force that is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. That will be going to the right. Alam na rin naman natin yan at napag-usapan na natin sa Newton's laws of motion. So in equation form, the impulsive force is equal to the... Uh, negative uh, force 2, okay? So, the forces are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. Ngayon, uh, kapag uh, i-review natin yung impulse momentum, ang sabi, yung impulse daw is equal to the change in momentum. Yung uh, change in momentum is equal to the mass times the change in velocity. In equation form, if you try to look at this um, uh, blue writing here, M1 delta B1 is equal to negative M2 multiplied by delta V2. And we are going to expand and simplify it further. M1 multiplied by the quantity B sub 1 final minus B sub 1 initial. This B sub 1 final and B sub minus B sub 1 initial comes from the change in velocity 1. Similarly, on the right side of the equation, we have negative M2 multiplied by B sub 2 final minus B sub 2 initial. Now, if we try to uh, distribute M1, we have M1 B1 final 
minus m1 v1 initial. On the other side, we have m2. We have to distribute that. Um, therefore, we have negative m2 v2 final. And that will be plus because negative multiplied by negative will become positive. Therefore, positive m2 v2 initial. If we try to arrange and uh, rewrite uh, making everything positive, so we are going to transpose uh, the negative m2 v2 final to the left side of the equation. And we are going to uh, transpose the negative m1 v1 initial to the right side of the equation. We will be having m1 v1 final plus m2 v2 final is equal to M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial. If we are going to rewrite the equation and we refer to this uh, uh, yellow highlighted uh, equation here on the middle, we are going to arrive to M1 V1 initial plus M2 V2 initial is equal to M1 V1 final plus M2 V2 final, wherein M1 is the mass of object 1. V1i is equal to the initial velocity of object 1. V1f is equal to the final velocity of object 1. M2 is equal to the mass of object 2. V2i is equal to the initial velocity of object 2. And V2f is equal to the final velocity of object 2. Therefore, the total momentum of two objects before the collision is equal to the total momentum of two objects after the collision yield to this equation. Dito naman sa green highlighted text na nandito sa baba, okay, in the case of a non-isolated system, the total system momentum is not conserved. Ibig sabihin, ang conservation of momentum pala ay applicable lamang kapag ka mga isolated system or walang mga uh, losses or ibang, uh, ibang forces acting doon sa ating system. Now, uh, because of the inevitability of friction and air resistance in any real collision, we can conclude that no system is ever perfectly isolated. Tama nga naman dahil uh, sa, buong, sa lahat dito sa ating mundo ay laging present yung friction at yung air resistance. But in some uh, physics problems, we are uh, disregarding the effects of uh, friction and air resistance. Therefore, we are having an isol uh, isolated system. So we are dealing with these kinds of problem. So uh, this is the uh, this is the final take for the uh, conservation of uh, momentum. The total momentum of the two objects before the collision is equal to the total momentum of the two objects after the collision. Okay, let us try to study the rudiments of uh, collision. A collision is the event in which two or more bodies exert forces on each other in about a relatively short time. Uh, kadalasan kapag ka na narinig natin yung collision, lagi natin na-imagine agad ay eh, nagbanggaan. Kadalasan ay eh, dalawang uh, sasakyan na nagbanggaan. Yan ang una-una natin na nadidepine sa ating mga isip or sa isip ng pangkaraniwang tao yung kolisyon. Maging ikaw or ako, kapag may sinabing kolisyon, agad-agad ay naiisip natin na mayroong nagbanggaan sa sakyan man or kung anong mga bagay. So, balit sa mga isip ng mga sentipiko or sa mga physicist, ay uh, iba ang kanilang definition sa collision. 
Ang um, pinakamainam ay tayo ay magbigay ng mga halimbawa upang mas maunawaan natin kung paano ba dinidefine ng mga siyentipiko ang kolisyon. Halimbawa, meron daw isang insekto na nagland sa or na dumapo sa dahon eh may tatuing daw natin ito na kolisyon kasi there is an uh, two body na nag-exert ng force in a relatively uh, short period of time. Ano? Halimbawa, yung uh, isa raw po sa strides across the lawn, okay, kapag ka daw yung uh, nagkocontact yung uh, yung paanong po sa dun sa ground, eh meron daw na collision. Halimbawa, may isa kang skateboard. Kapag nag skateboard tayo at uh, bigla tayong tumalon sa skateboard at uh, ating sinakyan ito, nagkaroon din daw na collision. A boxer throws a punch. His piece is said to collide with the opponent's body. Ayan, kapag ka, uh, sa mga boksingero, ang tawag din daw pala doon ay collision. So, uh, yan po yung mga scientific definition ng collision. Ngayon, uh, para mas madali nating maintindihan at para mas makarelate ang mga uh, kaedad ng mga estudyante, so, tinanong sa amin ito nung araw ng aking physics professor. At itatanong ko rin ngayon sa inyo, yun bang paghalik or yung kissing can be considered a collision? Well, ang masasabi natin, the answer is yes, kung yun ay ismak lang. Bakit? Kasi nga, ang definition ng collision, an event in which two or more bodies exert forces on each other in a relatively short time. Kapag short time lamang na nangyari, eh then, that is collision. But if that kissing lasts long, just like the case of uh, lip kissing, then it is no uh, no longer considered as a collision. Ang tawag natin doon ay interaction na. So, I hope you have a better understanding of collision. Okay. okay. Pero ano man yung, kung meron daw collision, meron daw alision. Uh, yung alision daw, is used to mean the striking of a stationary object. Kapag karo binangga ng isang bagay, yung nakatigil na bagay, ay eh, alision daw yun. Eh, kapag karo parehong naandar, collision daw yun. Okay, so, yan po yung ating mga dapat pag-aralan. Ngayon, uh, humahaba itong aking uh, video presentation and uh, mahirap itong i-upload sa internet it will take it will take a lot of time ang pinakamainam na lamang ay uh, magbigay ako ng mga ilang pointers para pag-aralan tungkol dito sa collision kasi ano na to eh, conceptualization you have to do your research also kasi nga uh, may spoon feeding tayo kapag uh, hindi estudyante yung gagawa ano so uh, ang pinakamainam Uh, magbibigay na lang ako ng mga ibang bagay na dapat natin pang pag-aralan. Uh, Nag-prepare ako dito ng mga ibang bagay na dapat nyo pang pag-aralan upang kung ano pa yung mga bagay na dapat. Dito sa collision, ang mga dapat natin pag-aralan yung tinatawag na elastic and inelastic collision. I-research nyo yun, ano? Meron ako dito ng uh, mga example. Uh, Napaka-importante nun uh, kapag ka tayo ay uh, kapag tayo ay gagawa ng uh, mag solve ng uh, problems. Kasi uh, uh, kapag hindi natin nauunawaan yung tinatawag na types of collision, eh, hindi natin alam kung anong isosolve natin at hindi natin alam kung anong i-apply natin formula. Okay, meron tayong tinatag na perfectly elastic collision, uh, meaning that they conserve both momentum and kinetic energy. I-discuss ko ito sa atin sa 
sa ating uh, classroom classroom lecture kasi kailangan kong makita ang reaction kung naiintindihan ba I would like I would have to ask personally uh, what is the understanding and comprehension of the of the students so uh, bigyan ko na lamang kayo ng advance sa uh, study pag-aralan ninyo yung perfectly elastic collision kailangan kasi dito kasi classroom interaction hindi ko kayang kayang ma-assess or ma-evaluate yung understanding which is very critical ano itong mga ganitong uh, mga binabasa ang very critical sa problem solving kasi yung problem solving may pattern lang yun eh ang importante sa atin maunawaan natin yung concepts at kapag ka nasiguruhan na ng teacher na naunawaan ng estudyante yung concept problem solving uh, will just come along no so kailangan yung matutunan yung perfectly elastic collision maghanap kayo ng example noon sa internet inelastic collision o oh, pagka ano ba yung inelastic at elastic perfectly inelastic collision okay oh, so sa madalit salita na lang ano uh, para habang nagre-research kayo meron kayong konting guide kapag elastic collision kapag ka daw nagbanggaan naghiwalay okay yan uh, elastic collision yan yung uh, perfectly inelastic collision pagkaraw uh, pag nag pagkatapos magbanggaan ay nagsama o okay, nagpisan okay yun yung tinatawag na uh, inelastic uh, collision perfectly inelastic collision so uh, uh, ituring niyo na rin doon sa case para mas madali ninyong maunawaan oh, so what type of collision is that o paano naging epekto kung ano naging epekto yun yung magiging type of collision so again i i am not going to uh, make this uh, video further dalawang bagay unang una is of uploading medyo tatagal kapag gumaba kasi yung video matagal din i-upload pangalawa kailangan you yourself uh, will be the one to look for this type of uh, 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 these are rudiments of uh, the subject matter okay, idagdag nyo dyan yung uh, sa pinag-aaralan ninyo yung uh, tinatawag natin na head-on collision okay. oblique collision yeah. i-research nyo yan i-research nyo yan i-discuss natin yan during our classroom uh, discussion I have to uh, get and assess uh, personally what is the con uh, the conception or the comprehension of the uh, students uh, para malaman natin kung saan pa natin uh, dadagdagan yung mga kailangan natin uh, bukod pa dyan uh, yung isolated system closed system open system uh, pag-aralan nyo rin yan. Iba yung isolated system sa thermodynamics, ha? Iba rin yung closed system sa thermodynamics. That is another top, uh, topic. Ang pag-aralan lang muna natin yung isolated system in a physical state or uh, sa physics, okay? Iba rin yung isolated system sa chemi chemistry. So, please uh, try to uh, study all about collision because this is a very, very uh, broad topic in uh, in physics and because it deals with our everyday uh, life uh, sa buong buhay natin every time mayat maya may collision na nangyayari kapag humawak ka sa baso iinom ka ng tubig may collision uupo ka sa lamesa there is collision there is friction there is uh, forces so we need to study about this one so I am uh, leaving it up to you and hopefully when we resume our class, we will be having a good interaction. So uh, sabi nga ng uh, isang napakagaling na edukador, which is a uh, quote, We can bring the horse to the river, but we can never make it drink. So ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Ano? Uh, siguro mas mainam ay... Uh, Ilagay natin dito yan sa ating uh, text. Ang ibig sabihin, so we can, 
we can bring the horse to the river, but we can never make it drink. Okay. So, yun yung uh, kasabihan, uh, quote unquote. Okay. That is quote unquote. We can bring the horse to the river, but we can never make it drink. Okay, uh, katulad namin mga mga teachers ninyo, nila lahat ko na, okay? uh, including the pamunuan of the school, everybody, we are bringing you to the river of knowledge. Okay? We are trying to provide uh, everything, but kung hindi nyo kayo sa inyong sarili, you can, uh, you do not want to drink, and that's the problem, okay? So, but if the horse really wants to drink, even though he is far away from the river, he will drink. Tandaan niya. So, uh, maraming mga may hirap tayong mga kababayan na uh, kawasa na lamang na makapasok sa ating uh, paaralan, pero nagsisiksa, okay? Uh, because they want to drink. Uh, they want the uh, knowledge, okay? So, ang isa pang uh, pwede nating tingnan itong kasabihan nito sa kabilang banda, uh, kailangan ninyong tulungan ng inyong sarili dahil uh, nandirito naman ang mga tao para tumulong sa inyo. Kaya lamang, kailangan din nating tulungan ng ating sarili dahil uh, tayo lamang sa ating sarili ang uh, makapag uh, makapagpapaunlad ng ating sarili. Okay? With that, I hope uh, you will uh, you will research for the rudiments of this subject matter and I leave it up to you and thank you and God bless us all.